The Dramatist Guild is the National Association of Playwrights, Composers, Lyricists, and Librettists. For the first time in a generation, our industry is undergoing a tectonic shift. If you're not a member, join today. Learn more at our website. Hello, I am Joey Hello. Stocks. I am the director of publications and um, the editor of The Dramatist here at The Dramatist's Guild. Um, this is our first ever, in case you haven't noticed, <laughs> couldn't figure it out, our very <laughs> first online edition of The Dramatist Live. So uh, it, well, I will take this opportunity to tell you to lower your expectations in terms <laughs> of our te technology and a uh, lack of lower your volume, but no, lower your expectations. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no, not your volume. Uh, yeah, um, and I am thrilled to be joined today uh, by two Dramatist Guild council members and uh, two members of our publications committee, Amanda Green and Christine Toy Johnson. Hi, y'all. Hi. Hey. Hey, Joey. Thank, thank you for being here. Um, it's so funny. Uh, uh, Christine is my neighbor, but because she's been on tour, um, I am now accustomed to seeing you only this way. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Zoom is my life. And now it just continues. <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, uh, I, let's see. I'm just going to talk to, um, to Terry. Terry, would you see if you could um, maybe move Deborah? over to our attendees side. Hi, Deborah. Deborah. Um, and we'll call her out in just a few minutes. Um, so here's what, oh, and Deborah has a dog. Hi. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> thanks so much, Terry. Uh, Terry Stratton is kind of invisible to some of you. Um, and that is because she's acting as our director today. Um, so she'll be uh, handling some of the things that, uh, that I need help with so that um, I can concentrate on, mm, doing my best to keep this ball rolling. Um, I, I, so the first thing I just wanna say to, um, to Christine and Amanda, other than thank you for being here, is um, how are y'all doing? Who, Amanda, you wanna go first? <laughs> Alphabetical uh, order? <laughs> is everybody sure, feeling sure. okay? I'm doing, I'm doing okay. I mean, uh, I, I think like everybody else, it's, you, it, we're right in the middle of the moment, so I don't have a lot of perspective on it. Um, I I did want to say like I've been feeling I, just the like pressure to um, be super productive and like make this a learning experience and like learn how to knit and finally you know <laughs> finally play that piano you know piece I've never learned how to play and and bake a souffle and you know write that p play and do you know and um, and alternate between that and like you know, feeling scared and feeling like not doing anything and not feeling inspired. And uh, I think I just feel like we're, that's the way we're going to be. And uh, I don't know, just if anybody out there is feeling the same kind of pressure, you know, give, take yourself off the, let yourself off the hook. Um, yeah. Chris, and, uh, are you feeling that? Are you, are you feeling any of that? Well, you know what? I, um, as, as many of you know, I've been on tour with uh, the first national tour of come from away for the past year and a half. So I, um, it had to come back home sort of quickly. Uh, we found out Thursday, after our Thursday night show that we were going on hiatus and they were getting us, flying us back all um, within like uh, not even 48 hours. So, um, so it's been, it, it, on one hand, it's, I'm just grateful to be home with my husband and my dog. We're all together. Um, uh, but also, you know, all the things, anxious, their anxiety on, on so many different levels. Um, my job is on hiatus, you know, you, there's a, of course, what everyone is going through, the, the sort of um, towing the line between being informed and not panicking and all of the, all of the too much information, you know, wanting to make sure you're informed. And then um, it's funny because because I have been on the road and I have been used to doing all these Zoom meetings, this week has actually been like 
all my other weeks full of meetings, except I'm not doing eight shows a week at night, you know? So, so it's interesting. So I, um, on one hand, um, I, I'm also just trying to stay, um, mindful of, of not, of, of being, reaching out to my community, being there for my community and not panicking. That's sort of the thing. I do wash my hands obsessively. I have to say, yeah. <laughs> I, to, I admit that I admit to that. Yeah. Same. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've, I've done some uh, writing, uh, you know, with, with a collaborator with uh, Zoom and FaceTime and, and that, that does ground me, you know, uh, cause we love, we're writers. We love writing. And when you're in the middle of it, uh, everything disappears for a while. Yeah. And it's great to keep our minds engaged in that way, but also not have the pressure of writing the great, you know, Same. American yep. play in the middle of it, you know. <laughs> it's only like the fourth or fifth day. So, you know, maybe we can wait till next week to write that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm giving myself 10 days to write the great American play. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. My I also, God. I also am collaborating on something with somebody and we had a, we had a, a meeting scheduled on the phone for Monday and we were like, let's just, let's just talk about, you know, what, where we are and the project, but also everything else. And, and that's been really helpful. Um, yeah. 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 I feel like it's been really helpful for me to, to just to reach out to people and, um, and have that moment of, are you feeling like this? Um, because, you know, on top of everything, agreeing with everything that you've both said, um, I am also, uh, I also have every symptom of my regular seasonal allergies right now. Right, um, but it freaks you is, out. Which is itchy throat and itchy eyes and feeling, oh, just a little bit more tired than I normally would. But I, my brain has r- completely distorted that into the worst possible scenario pretty much every hour on the hour. Yeah, um, And You're then I have alone. to remind myself, oh yeah, no. No. <laughs> it's the time of year. <laughs> It's just, it's really the time of year. It's you know, I I had been washing my hands so much that um, I I woke up one one morning and my hands were all like cracked and tried like oh my god what other illness have I contracted like relax you know you're washing your hands like eighty five times a day moisturize. That's right. <laughs> I also made two meatloafs, so I have been somewhat productive, um, and I tend to put a lot. As of- did I. Did I you? Just want to say- <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe meatloaf is the go-to. I think so. Food at least. Well, I I put twenty cloves of garlic in each meatloaf, so we've now renamed it garlic loaf. <laughs> um, but I'm expecting that it's going to keep us both um, very, very, very healthy, um, and it's kept us so healthy that it's now keeping my boyfriend from sleeping at night. <laughs> so oh, I'm going to have to oh. back off the garlic uh, oh. for sleeping purposes. Um, wow. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So I have a couple of announcements to make. Um, we've got some things. Should you be at home and thinking, wow, I'm stir crazy. I really want something to do. Uh, we have, um, we, I say the royal we, lots of people have been involved in, in making this happen. Um, we've lifted the paywall on the Dramatists Archive online um, so that it's free for anybody to browse. And uh, with the help of Emmanuel Wilson, we've just added a bunch of new back issues. So if you if you looked at it yesterday and you look at it today, you're going to see a, a lot more issues than you would normally would. Um, so that's open for people to browse um, for a little while. Um, and uh, I hope you guys will take advantage of that. It's just on the Drama Skill website. If you go to news and media, um, under the if you hover over Dramatist, you get lots of options. And our issue archive is one of those options. Um, and uh, I'm going to actually ask uh, uh, a couple of coworkers to come online with us. Um, Terry, would you uh, welcome in um, Lily Dwoskin and um, Jordan Stovall? Um, we've got a project that some of you know about and some of you might not called End of Play. And um, they've been putting this together and it is in process right now. So I was hoping that Lily, when she, uh, when she's available, there, there she is. is. Hello. Um, I was hoping, Lily, would you, would you tell us a little bit about End of Play and how it came to be? Of course. 
Um, so End of Play is our brand new national initiative. It's also our very first time um, doing that as well as these webinars. Um, the challenge for participating playwrights will be to either pen an, an entirely new play or to pull an old play out of the drawer and finish it in the month of March. Um, we have organizers all across the country and the world who are organizing events like write-ins and celebrations. They've been online and in person, mostly online now. Um, and the goal with that is to keep the playwrights momentum alive um, and to bring people together because ultimately the goal of end of play is to get writers to the finish line through motivation and community. Um, and the inspiration for this came while I was actually a participant in NaNoWriMo, which is the National Novel Writing Month. Um, and it's essentially the same um, idea, but for novels. And I thought if novelists can do it, why can't playwrights? Um, so I took the idea to Jordan and they took it to the regional reps and the regional reps took it um, to their communities and the ball just, ro the ball just rolled from there. Um, and I've been absolutely thrilled with the success of the program so far. I hear from playwrights every day about their progress and more importantly, they're communicating with each other in their communities, supporting each other um, and, and joining together to create something new. Great, I love it. And that's going on all through the month of March, Lily? Yes, it will go until March 31st. Um, every day I'm sending encouraging emails um, to participating playwrights. Um, and we've used a platform called Basecamp where uh, writers can join in together, talk about their projects, plan uh, Zoom uh, write-ins and uh, events. That's great. Jordan, if there's anybody out there who, uh, who have, has not done this and they're now suddenly housebound like so many of us and looking for something to do, would you tell us how people can jump in while it's in progress? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are a little over halfway through March now, uh, but there are still 12 days left in March. So that means that there is still 12 days left uh, for you to be writing your end of play play. Um, so you should definitely hop on and do that. Um, if you go on the Dramatist Guild website, um, and I can actually, I think I can share my screen. Um, oh, Terry's got it. Thank you, Terry. Uh, if you go on the Dramatist Guild website and you go to the about menu, which is on the top left, um, from the national initiatives, uh, national initiatives, you'll see the end of play link there. Um, so if you click on that, it'll tell you a little bit more about it. Um, you'll see a page count um, of all of the different participating writers and how many pages they have write, uh, they've wrote, written per day and over the course of end of play. If you just go to the bottom, if you click find out more, that'll bring you to our end of play press release. Um, Okay. And there should be, oh, okay. Um, there is a, there's a form, if you click sign up here, which is at the bottom, um, it'll bring you to a link. You'll see the link at the bottom of that form there. We, we placed it in an easier, easier to access place. So it'll be uh, in an easier place, but that form will uh, allow you to, uh, track your pages, that link there at the bottom. Um, but if you go back, sorry, Terry, to the initial end of play page, there should be a button at the top. And if there's not now, okay. There will be a magic red button at the top of this page. Uh, that'll say track your pages. Um, so that'll be uh, if you're in the process of, of writing your play, you can track your pages there. Um, the cutoff to actually register for end of play was March 1st, um, which is the gathering of daily emails, but you can still tag in by sharing your progress uh, with, with other writers across the country. And you can always write in to me and Lily as well. Um, we can add you into a regional base camp uh, to connect you with writers in your community because um, they're still um, informal um, 
informal um, sort of sharing of scripts, sharing of, of lines that are happening and uh, helping, helping each other sort of out of writing ruts and things like that. And if you go on the resource calendar on the website, there are still um, virtual end of play events that are happening across the country that you can tune into. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Lily. I appreciate Thank that. Thank yeah. you. Um, so, uh, yeah, go ahead, Amanda. Oh, uh, I just want to, before we, we went any further, I, we, uh, we just had a, Christine and I are both on the council, and uh, we want to put a plug in for the Dramatist Guild Foundation, uh, dgf.org. Uh, if you need to apply for emergency grant, if you're a composer, librettist, playwright, uh, lyricist, um, you know, if you're in dire straits, this is really, you know, the, all the rules are thrown out. So feel free, uh, dgf.org. Or if you're uh, flush and feel like you're doing well and uh, you, you, you know, you feel confident that you're going to be okay, consider donating a few dollars there or whatever you can. Absolutely. Thank you. But they yeah. are there. They are there for us writers. DGF. They are. They are. And they, yeah, they're here now, but they're here always, which is great. Um, I, I am, a, yes. I am, I am a, a grateful recipient of their, of their care um, from a few years back. So um, um, I am grateful to them every day. Awesome. Uh, so um, we've, I, I was interested to hear uh, kind of what's happening um, out and about. And so I invited, um, I invited Teresa Coleman Wash from Dallas to join us and Gwydion Sullivan to join us from DC. Um, Terry, if you would help me get them into the room, that would be fantastic. I'm Thanks. so glad they're, they're here. I know, I'm so excited. I haven't seen them in a little bit. Hi, Teresa. Teresa, ooh, you've got some kind of interesting um, <laughs> double that? exposure happening. It's very groovy. I don't know how you manage that, but teach me how. <laughs> what wizardry is that? It's so good. Okay, I've got to get rid of this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's good to see you. There you are. Here I am. I'm so <laughs> grateful to see you both. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. You're welcome. Um, I was, Christine and Amanda and I were chatting a little bit earlier and uh, and Christine was saying that she was supposed to be there with you, Teresa. Yeah. Yeah, so on March 11th, Dallas County declared a state of emergency and prohibited public gatherings of 500 people or more. Now it's down to 50. And so um, Christine and I plan to do a speaker series event on access and representation. So I get a, a panic email from her saying, oh my God, I gotta get out of town. And, and so um, it's been really chaos around here for us, as you can imagine, the rest of the country, all bars and dine in restaurants, gyms, theaters are closed. Um, in an effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Um, the Dallas County has limited, you know, um, public gatherings to 50 people and recreational gatherings to only 10 people. So um, most theaters have canceled or postponed events. Some have experienced, um, are experiencing um, many, you know, ticket loss, of course, and are pivoting to digital. The Dallas Theater Center is sending out a, an American mariachi video of their first dress rehearsal. They cancel and struck the show after the dress before the first preview. Sage West is recording and streaming their performance of the children. We found out that um, Actors' Equity is making new streaming uh, media agreements available to select regional theater companies. Um, and so we are, we're you know, contacting them to make sure that, that that contract is available for small to mid-sized theater companies as well. Um, some offices are closed and staff is working remote. Our administration office is open. We have um, a lot of arts education programs. So we wanted to make sure that those teaching artists were compensated in a timely fashion. So there are only uh, 
three people on staff here. Uh, so I kudos to my staff. They've been working tirelessly this week to make sure that um, you know our those people who depend on whose livelihood depend on what we do are not are not um, suffered any um, more than it has been. Um, I will say, guys, that uh, what's been very um, I will say hopeful for us is our organizations are developing a lot of free online programming and our director of education that's just had a great Zoom conference with our teaching artists. So we really, um, I'm a huge believer in using the collective wisdom of crowds. So a lot of innovation is coming in that way. And the other thing is the philanthropic community is being very responsive. So uh, the city of Dallas, arts and culture office has been incredibly responsive and they're managing all of our current upcoming contracts and and deadlines and so that's giving us a lot of operating capital uh, from the losses that we we experience from canceling those contracts also multiple north texas funders are creating emergency respond funds to help nonprofits that are stretched during this COVID-19. Um, we also learned that National Endowment for the Arts is open for business and they're responding to um, applications and funding as well. Uh, we're holding a lot of uh, virtual meetings with our board members. We are meeting on a monthly basis. and I suspect that a lot of theater boards are meeting monthly as well. So I, I'm feeling really hopeful. I think that we're banding together. The North Texas Theater Alliance um, has been in contact, that's made up of artistic directors in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So we're reaching out to each other, sharing resources. And so I'm hopeful that we're, we're all banding together to get through this very difficult time. Yeah, that's great, Teresa, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Gwydion, how are things in DC? What's going on there? There's always an extra special layer of, of wonder being in the nation's capital in this, uh, <laughs> at, at this time. Uh, it's very similar to what we just heard Teresa say in, in uh, talk about in Dallas. There might be a little bit more urgency here, a little bit more um, immediate response, actually. Uh, the governor in Maryland has been very proactive. The governor in Virginia has been very proactive. And the DC government was a little bit slower to react, but but acted as quickly as they probably should have. Um, theaters are all shut down. They shut down very promptly, uh, you know, hurting a bunch of people in the process, of course. We're all feeling the loss and the sting. A few of them have made commitments to pay the artists working on the productions that were shut down, which is incredibly admirable. That and, is and, unbelievable. Yeah, in my mind, that's the, the right thing to do. Um, yeah. uh, it, period, and I'm, I'm glad to see it. I, I'll, I'll shout out Willie Mammoth for having been the first theater I saw to do that. Um, my old stomping grounds, I was very pleased to see Maria Gornadis uh, and Emma Gabe make that, make that decision. Awesome. The uh, Greater Washington Community Foundation, which is an organization that supports a lot of arts organizations in town, just uh, announced a, a massive contribution from, among others, Amazon, a uh, new resident of the district. Uh, and they're building a fund that will sort of serve as an emergency fund for a variety of nonprofits, including arts and culture nonprofits, particularly those that work with children, which I'm glad that's where they're aiming. Uh, there are there's lots of conversation about how theaters can be helping each other get through things. Hopefully nobody having to get furloughed or laid off. We haven't heard any announcements yet in that regard, though one fears they might be coming. Um, the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities made a really grand gesture. Uh, they fund a lot of individual artists and arts organizations in DC. Uh, the sort of deadline for your grant report was mid-April and they said, if you get your grant report in earlier, we'll process your check earlier. So that's a way of getting getting funds out sooner. Um, and they've been, you know, doing a lot of reassuring of the people they support, which is great. I'm I'm proud of that organization. Um, 
you know, Americans for the Arts, which is here in DC, uh, although a national organization is putting together a, a, a campaign to, to hopefully elicit $4 billion of support for individual artists and arts organizations. So they've got a petition going around and I recommend you find and sign them. Uh, not a petition, I'm sorry, a survey, especially if you run an arts organization, if you could fill that out and give them information so that they can understand the economic impact of what we're living through, that's really useful. Uh, but otherwise, you know, artists are finding creative ways in DC to support each other doing Zoom things and remote things and reading each other's work and talking. I personally last night spent two hours on a, a Zoom session with the members, my co-founders of the Wilders of Playwrights Collective in DC, just to listen and feel connected and heard and love on each other a little bit. Yeah. So, What's going on with the new play exchange? The New Play Exchange has been my bright spot. Uh, I'm really, really moved by what I've seen on the sort of the first day when it became clear that our theatrical calendar was getting decimated. Uh, there was a playwright named Stephanie Allison Walker who put a, an offer on Twitter to read any play on the New Play Exchange for any production that was canceled. And it, it just spiraled. It became what I'm calling a generosity revolution because one after another, playwrights leapt on saying, I'll read too, I'll read too, send me your links, send me your links. And then Donna Hoke, um, fellow Guild member, uh, put together a Google Doc that's also now circulating. And that doc has links to on the new play exchange to every play uh, for every show that's been canceled that we have yet or that she has yet to assemble. So it's a long list and people are reading them and writing recommendations and tweeting their recommendations and every day there's more generosity. It's, it's a way we can engage with art. It's not a play living in a room with an audience, but it's an audience of one reading a script, reacting to the script, having an experience and sharing it with the world. And that, that may be all we can do right now, but it's 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 nice and it's comforting to see people, you know, leap in on each other's behalf. I'm really really moved by that. Yeah. Very very moving. Awesome. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Gwydion, for checking in with us. I appreciate it. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, this is a great segue to for me to uh, do something which I, I I intended to remind you all of or to inform you of, if you didn't know this already, um, uh, the, the Guild has a new page up on our website full of resources. Um, I'm hoping that as I'm talking that Terry will be able to share her screen with us and we can see that page. Yay, it's happening. Wait, it's not happening. It was. It'll be here. Um, we've got a bunch of new resources. Um, one of the things that we're doing right now uh, is an initiative. There's Into Play again. Hi, Into Play. Um, uh, is an initiative um, where we are tracking canceled productions. And these are being self-reported. Um, there is a link on our website for that. But at the moment, uh, oh, and there it is. I see that it's part of this, this paragraph right here. Um, this page is on our website currently. Um, as you can see, it's got lots of uh, links. It's loaded with links, um, things that, that we hope you find helpful. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is, and several organizations are doing this, trying to track productions that are being canceled across the country. Um, we're up to, as of this morning, I think we're up to 144 that have been reported to us. Um, and that is, that's probably changed just since this morning because lots of people have been coming on and letting us know about that. We're hearing from not only from guild members, but also from theaters who are self-reporting the productions that they've had to close down um, or, or end early. Um, so uh, if, you are, if you are online now and you're listening to this, I hope that you will um, consider using that form and, uh, and reporting your canceled productions. Um, some people are also reporting um, canceled readings. Some people are also reporting um, canceled workshops. So we're hearing from a lot of different people about a lot of different things. Um, I, I can't promise you what we're going to be able to do with all that information. Uh, we just need to amass as much as we can and then see what we are legally, uh, what we are legally able to do. Um, so uh, thank you, Terry, I appreciate that. Um, thanks again, Teresa and Gwydion for joining us. I appreciate that so much. Um, so some of the people who have um, 
Terry, I'm going to use this as a moment to segue um, some of the people who have uh, have gotten back to us by filling out that form have joined us today um, and they are dotted all over the country. Their productions dot all over the country. Um, and so I am I'm waiting, waiting here now while I'm chatting for Terry to invite those people in. Um, uh, we're being joined by Hannah Cole. Um, sorry, I've lost my, my list here. I've got to read my names. Um, Inda Craig Galvin, um, Kit Yan and Melissa, Melissa Yee, um, and John Klein. I think, I think I saw John online earlier. Oh, good. Oh, great. Fantastic. Oh, look, you're all here. Amazing. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Thank you all for joining Hello. us. Um, it, interesting. Uh, I know that we've we've already discussed that Christine was was has been on tour um, as an actor and that her tour has been suspended um, until further notice. Um, but Amanda, I think I think you had a production that just ended early, right? Yeah, I had a production off Broadway uh, <clears throat> at the Signature Theater. Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice with the new group, and uh, we were yeah we just. Uh, closed down, cut short of uh, three weeks of our run. Yeah. 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 Well, in, in the grand scheme of things, I feel like that was, you know, it's, it's incredible. Uh, but you guys can tell us about your experience because I want to hear about it. Yeah. Hannah, uh, your, your production was in, um, was in Issaquah and, um, oh, oh, help me. Issaquah. Yeah. And Issaquah, Washington, which is in King County, um, which happens to be the epicenter of the virus outbreak here in the United States. Yeah. Um, things there happen very rapidly. Um, I know I, I reached out to you and I was like, this is going crazy down here. I should write an article for you. And then there was literally no time to write it because, because of how swiftly it moved. Um, the deaths were going up so quickly and it was very hard to impress upon people um, around me how close we were to um, to the epicenter, to the to the life care center where people were dying, um, and then trying to explain to them that people had not been wearing masks or gloves there, that that virus had gone unchecked, that people had been visiting, collecting garbage, delivering mail, that the the grocery stores that that virus was out in the community, and because of the way that King County um, works, it's a very commuter um, centric place to live. Mm -hmm. And um, all of these communities that are kind of bedroom communities, people are, are driving all around. And, you know, in a seven minute drive from, from us to where everything is happening, seemed far away to a lot of people in the theater, you know, and we were given instructions to use hand sanitizer. And I kept thinking like, oh my God, this is like the black plague when people are like rubbing garlic on themselves. Like hand sanitizer is okay, but we need to be, we need to be looking at this like it's an actual epidemic and a pandemic that's coming swiftly. Um, so, I mean, there were days when I was supposed to be doing rewrites and I was walking 20 minutes in the rain to the grocery store. And I, okay, I stole a shopping cart and I drove like rolled beans all the way back to my house. Like I, there were no, there was nothing to, nothing to buy. So I got to the grocery store and this was days before everybody else made the runs on the stores and they were already empty. Um, Ugh. I did return that shopping cart though. Good. On my way out of town. Um, but you know, it <laughs> happened so fast that what, what scared me was that, um, there seemed to be a real lack of worry. Um, but as I mean, I've, I've been in other situations where there've been little outbreaks or there've been violence outbreaks and you have to be, my dad always used to say the only people that got off the Titanic were the people that made it to the boats. And so to me, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to spend my money on buying non-perishables and medicine and cleaning supplies because I can always have another production. That really didn't bother me when they canceled the show. Um, you know, I'd been sitting in a theater where they'd been telling people to stay home who were sick and people were coming to the theater and coughing and then passing around food to share and having brownie plates out and pizza. And, and you know, I just like, I'm like, you guys, like, we just, we can't do this. 
<laughs> finally, like, you know, um, Jay Markham, who's the production manager there at the theater, when he got on, when he started moving, he moved so fast and so swiftly with such intelligence and care and speed um, that he really put a stop to all of that. Um, and it was clear to me that the show was going to be closing um, before we opened. I mean, it, it actually closed. We, we were put, um, Governor Inslee banned 250 gatherings um, the day before we opened. Um, wow. they, were, they were talking about how they could space people out in the theater. And I was like, dudes, no, <laughs> like, no, we're not going to space people out in the theater. Like, everybody should just go home, be safe, be overly cautious. It's okay to be overly cautious. It's okay to, to be prepared. And you can always have another production. Like, but you have to be there, you know? So I think my, my main thing is that, you know, I, I mean, I, I had pneumonia a couple of years ago and my lungs still haven't quite recovered, um, but I do, I do feel healthy. I'm trying to keep my immune system up, but I am self-quarantined and um, because of being in the epicenter and it's not because I'm sick or because I think I'm sick, it's because I would never ever want to risk putting someone else in jeopardy. Sure, um, sure. And I take it really seriously. So I don't know, it went so fast, it was terrifying. And, um, you know, to see, to see 60, 70 people lose their jobs all at the same time, that's something I've never seen in my life. And I actually, I thought I felt calm, but I didn't realize I was in shock. Um, and it was, it was shock to realize that it had gotten to that point of danger. Um, and just standing there, I think the first thing I thought was, I was like, well, I'm okay with the show closing. That's okay. And then we have a lot of kids acting in the show and they are sobbing. Um, there's people who are going to be out of money to pay rent or buy food within two weeks. Um, it was serious. It's serious business. So, you know, the fact that there people are even considering um, freelancers and artists right now, I know Washington State is considering giving relief to artists, um, which I've never heard of. <laughs> so it's like, so it's nice to know that the people are, are thinking widespread about everybody. Yeah. But yeah, that's great. I'm okay with and, the show being closed. And, and tell, sorry, just so that we're all on the same page here, would you tell sure. us the name of, of your show? Sure. I also have four names in my show. It was Hansel and Gretel and Heidi and Gunter. And it was a black comedy for families about death. <laughs> so like we would be singing these songs about, there's one song called So Many Ways to Die, which was hilarious two weeks ago. <laughs> and then we're just sitting there in the theater and everyone's like, it's not funny. And I'm like, well, it might be funny next year. I'm like, I don't think we're gonna be able to really do a lot of these songs. There's, it's a song, you know, the whole show is about how to survive in a dangerous world joyfully. And, um, and connected and it's a funny show but it's amazing how circumstance can change what's funny because wow. it sure wasn't funny i know i know michelle lowe had this whole idea <laughs> for the relevance issue a couple of years ago do you yeah. remember that amanda and christine and it was based on the the relevance issue was based on um the fact that she'd written a play and uh the entire the entire plot point of the play changed overnight with a government ruling and suddenly it made it was just made no sense and so she yeah. was like what do i do do i abandon all this work or do i reframe it and so yeah it's it's uh wow how yeah. about you guys what's what's going on who else is yeah uh uh inda hi where are where are you where are you calling in from hi i'm in los angeles you're in los angeles yeah great how, how are things there? Um, quiet. It's weird. Now that the restaurants are all shut down because it's a big restaurant town. <laughs> um, and then all of, we got a lot of small theaters and, you know, those are all done for now. So it's, it's strange. There's usually a lot of people out on the streets and the freeways and, yeah. and it's not anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I think you reported to me that you had two productions that were closed. Is that right? Well, I had two, one play had two readings and one production. Oh, wow. So this one play just got hammered. <laughs> um, I had a, a reading in uh, Birmingham, Alabama at uh, Red Mountain Theater was doing a human rights 
theater festival uh -huh. and they were going to fly me down there for it. Um, and the day I was supposed to fly, I just felt really tired and thought maybe I shouldn't go. And they were really understanding about that. And then the, I think the next day they canceled the festival because they hadn't had any cases in Alabama. And then suddenly they did have one confirmed case. So that was gone. Um, and then I was doing a reading, was in rehearsals for a reading in Los Angeles with EST Ensemble Studio Theater. Los Angeles, we've been doing rehearsals and I think the the actual reading would have been Saturday, this coming Saturday. Uh, so that was canceled. And then I had a production, the world premiere of the same play coming up in May with Playwrights Arena uh, in here in Los Angeles. And that was postponed. Uh, hopefully, okay. you know, it'll come back when we can all come back. Um, and I think that theater was the first one in Los Angeles to say we're you know, we're canceling the rest of our season. Um, and I was, I was grateful that they had the fourth, the forethought to do that, to say, you know, we're going to get ahead of this and we're not going to put any people in, put a big group of people together. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's hard because, you know, the plays have a little traction and, you know, felt like it was going to have its little moment. And then every day I, I went on the, the site and logged in to say, you know, the tracking to say, yeah, I lost this. And then like the next day it was like, hey, it's me again. And yeah. the third time. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for reporting that to us. Um, I should, I should say this is, uh, that as soon as we're, we're, uh, we, we're going to, we're going to switch segments here shortly and turn it over to the business affairs department. Um, and, uh, and they will be taking some questions, I believe, from some of the people who are online. So if you're somebody who has submitted a question, we may not be able to get to all of them. We've gotten a lot of questions and most of them are about business. Um, so uh, uh, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. Um, but thank you, Enda, for, for, for joining us today. I appreciate that. Of course, of course. Yeah, best of, best of luck to you. And I'm, I'm hopeful that your postponed production is just postponed. And uh, yeah, keep us posted on it. We would, we yeah, want to know. Yeah, I'm also looking at ways to stream it or do something else and figuring out what the legality of that is. And Sure. Hopefully know, we're we going to be talking about that it. today a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure that we've got all the answers, but uh, we're at least looking into it and um, it will be addressed. So good, great. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Kit and Melissa. Hi, how are you? Well, thanks. Where are you? Where are you today, Melissa? I am in Baltimore. You're in Baltimore. Kit, where are you? I'm in Minneapolis. Ah, gotcha. Well, your show is in Minneapolis, right? The one that just closed early? Yeah, we had our world premiere. Um, it opened uh, March 6th and it closed March 14th, about a week into it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we got a we got eight eight performances in there. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. we how saying, did it feel? How does it how did it feel? It must have been so. Uh, I don't know. Do you tell us? Yeah, I think like well, I think to be honest, like obviously we're a little bit disappointed. I think we had a bunch of producers that were going to come see it that were no longer able to make it. Um, so definitely, we're disappointed about that, but at the same time, just really grateful that we had a chance to open and that we all created something beautiful that, you know, we, we like us and the cast bonded and we got uh, into a really great place in our script that we got to really work on it and do that. And, um, and I know Kit, that we, like I was talking with one of the actors Z about how like, we only, we had a very short rehearsal process. We had three weeks and we kept asking Mixed Blood, who's very supportive and very wonderful for like more time to rehearse. But I guess it turned out it was kind of a blessing because if we had more time to rehearse, then we might not have opened at all. So I think uh, things work in mysterious ways and, and ultimately we, we have a show that we're super proud of. That's great. I don't know if you want to add anything, Kit. Yeah, for sure. Um, opening weekend was fantastic. Um, and, and like Hannah said earlier, you know, there'll be more productions We've got, there's a, there's a long, you know, uh, life ahead for all of us in the theater. And I think we're trying to remain really optimistic about what it'll look like. I think we were, Melissa and I were talking to some um, producers via email today and we were talking about how like, when this is all over, what people need, will need most is, 
is gathering again and and the theater is the just the best place to do that um i uh it sort of like you were saying and uh we are sort of having a a moment here in our lives and uh uh, so we are having our, our world premiere of our first musical, but we also have another musical rehearsing in New York where we're, we're both also part-time based out of um, that uh, stopped rehearsals and we don't know, we don't know what will happen to it. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, trying to, trying to remember that, like, uh, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to talk about and, and make and create as we, as we're in this time too. Yeah. People want to hear what, what you, what we've been writing. So that's, that's the good news. You know, it, it may not happen for the next couple of months and we don't know what the future is, but congratulations, everybody here. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, John Klein, where are you calling in from? Are you in Baltimore? Let's see. Hold on. John is on mute. John, do you know where your unmute button is? Uh, can you hear me now? I can. Oh, okay. I think that uh, Terry did that. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Yeah, oh, yes. I just, she was texting me and saying, I think I've lost control of the meeting and now she's got it back. So okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm grateful. Hi, John. Hi. Hi. Are, are, you, are you in Baltimore? Is that right? No, I'm in Frederick, Maryland. Frederick, Maryland. I'm sorry. from Baltimore. Yeah. Okay. I don't know Not how far. I got to Baltimore. All right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I think, frankly, I'm one, probably one of the more fortunate playwrights because my show did get postponed and not canceled and Great. it is rescheduled for September. That's fantastic. Which theater is that, John? This is the Victory Theater, which is in Burbank, California. Oh, okay. And they are very conscientious uh, pair of producers, artistic director of producers. Um, and they, we, we actually made it all the way through tech. Uh, and then between tech and first preview, uh, that's when it really hit Los Angeles. And so we shut down. Uh, there was an article written in the Los Angeles Times by Charles McNulty, who's the yes. theater critic there. And the headline was, the show should not go on. Uh, the next day, most theaters in Los Angeles canceled their seasons, yeah. uh, or the remainder of their seasons. Yeah. Uh, but we are hopefully going to uh, mount the show again, and it will happen in September. And I think with the same cast, because I saw all of them at the meeting where we canceled, and they said, we're still in. Great. Great. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. Well, uh, well, that's a, 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 a little bit of a bright spot. So uh, <laughs> good, good. I'm hoping good, there are more. Yeah, good for you and good for the theater. I'm, I'm happy that, that, they've, um, that they've stepped up and have been able to make that promise. That sounds really lovely. Me too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. All right. Um, so now that Terry's back in control, Terry, while I chat for just a second, um, would you um, bring in, uh, Jenna and Amy and the business affairs folks. Um, so we're going to make a little bit of a segue here um, and turn it over to, uh, to this group of people, um, which means that, um, yes, <laughs> Terry just texted me and said, it'll take a minute. Yes, that's, that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah. Uh, Jenna has been working on a program. Um, so, if you could, Terry, if you could bring Jenna in first, I will let her tell us about that program while the other people are being, um, being moved around. There's Jenna. Jenna, you're currently on mute. Can you unmute? Hi, everyone. Hi. So Jenna Crisfanti is, um, is our um, uh, Director of Community Engagement. Is that right? Did I get it right? You're right. OK, good. Um, hi, Jenna. Thanks for being here. Um, so, Jenna, would you tell us a little bit? I'm going to put myself on mute um, and let you tell this the group about uh, what what initiative you're working on right now and how they can participate. Okay. Well, 
You know, when the Guild brought me on board a couple of years ago, it was because it wanted to have more of, uh, you know, more of a foot into the realm of policy, public affairs, government affairs, and politics. And right now, we're seeing a lot of things um, in response to the coronavirus. But I'll say, normally, I am the sort of Larry David, misanthropic, and I don't, I, you know, I get nervous. But I have to say, I've been astounded at the level of generosity, um, responsiveness, and um, especially at the state level, about how people, and even non-governmental actors, have been responding. I've seen a lot of generosity, I've seen a lot of compassion and a lot of sort of people really trying to do the right thing. And that to me is incredibly encouraging because normally when we think about our political action, it's you know sort of like an uphill battle all the time. But right now what I feel like there's a spirit or there's, an, there's a movement, there's an energy of people are really trying to make sure that public health is prioritized. And with that, um, the first thing that we're working on in terms of the guild is encouraging our members <clears throat> to write to their state public health officials um, because we know that if people don't right now currently regular people don't have access to a test and that lack of access i think is feeding some of the anxiety um, the fear that people have is that because they don't know if they have it so what we're asking all of our dg members in today's um email communication sent up by our team, <clears throat> excuse me, we're asking and we're sent links to every single state plus, the, plus Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico and DC. Um, please take the time to call, write and email your state public health agencies. It only take five minutes, but we need to collectively and outside of just being writers, we need to get the test because if people don't have access to a test, they don't know their status, the fear and anxiety will just keep on growing and continue and we will never get back to our normal. So that's the first step. Um, you know, look in our email today, every state is there, call, email, write, text. That really has to be priority number one. And that's the kind of link you can share with all of your friends, all of your family, your coworkers, um, across different genres. It's not just for theater stakeholders, but because of what we do in theater, we're hard we're hit harder i think when we, we talk about bands so please send that and share that with all of your colleagues take it takes five minutes we're all writers please write to your state governmental officials because that's how a lot of the money is allocated to sort of your local hospitals and everything else um even though money does come from the federal government it really does get sort of um siphon through the state government and that's where you want to start so we've sent that out today um we've been working on the u.s census getting people right now you, this week i think you should have received um a u.s census um, envelope at home please 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 we've been sort of ringing this u.s census bell but now more than ever it is so important to fill this out because when the next budget cycle comes in the way that budget, that massive, massive federal budget is going to be distributed will depend on how this U.S. Census is recorded. So we want money to come back to New York. We want to be able to have all the resources available to us, especially um, for the theater community. If we want to take that seriously, um, we want to make sure that that U.S. Census form is filled out so that as many federal dollars come back to the state of New York and that helps you know make a larger pie so that when we start writing to um, different governmental officials across the board that we have a larger stack of money to get and that comes from the U.S. Census. They are connected beyond measure, beyond belief. It's boring, it's not glamorous, it's not sexy, it doesn't seem revolutionary but it's in these small boring minute ignored details where real government um, functions on the back end that no one sees, but that US census envelope, please, if we as a theater community can encourage everyone within our sort of social networks and our families to tend that back, that will make sure that we get a larger, pie, larger piece of that pie into New York so that we can, you know, six months or 12 months or however long, um, we can start getting that federal money sent to us. Um, we're still doing our voter registration. And this is a thing that we were talking about um, with Gwydion and with Nicole. You know, we're just sort of brainstorming in terms of what the, the, you know, our political engagement committee can do. And one of the things that we were looking at, you know, and this was last week, Thursday, 
we were thinking, oh, maybe they should stop, you know, you know, we should think about moratoriums on rent or evictions or, um, you know, mortgage payments. And that's why I feel that I've seen a measure of generosity that I've never seen in my 40 years here in New York. Um, you know, you have here in New York, you know, the Real Estate Board of New York, they by themselves, last week, they were the first, they issued a 90 day moratorium on evictions, you know, and that really gives members of, you know, and not just if you're in theater, but if you were in New York, 90 days to sort of sort out how you can move forward, what you can do. So you're not running to try to find ways to earn a living and exposing other people potentially. And I've been overwhelmed and I've just been so moved and touched at people being, that's generosity in the practical way. Um, and the same as being, I see, I've seen it so far here in New York, um, there's been a moratorium on um, mortgage payments. Um, I think we're moving, I haven't seen the actual um, statements because we have lots of different utilities, so it's harder. Um, but similar, I feel like it's about to come any day now that the, that the utility companies are going to, again, put a moratorium on sort of shut off or turn offs, you know, or whatever they, you know, different comp electric companies do, the gas companies, the water companies. Um, I find that, again, incredibly encouraging. So the, the kind of conversations that Nicole and Gui and I were talking about, oh, well, let's start a campaign for this. They're doing it on their own. And I've been blown away because I didn't expect that at all. Yeah, I, that's fantastic. I, uh, I think that, I think um, Amanda's got something. No, just uh, also, uh, again, uh, we had a council meeting today, but uh, Michael Jackson also brought up uh, that you really can also be your own advocate. Like if you have a mortgage payment and you don't live in New York and you can't make it, you can call the mortgage company and say, I can't, yeah, yeah. let's work this out. You can call, you know, be your best advocate and call, call the, whoever is, you know, whoever is, Dunning you at the moment and, and make a deal. They'll make a deal, insist they make a deal. I also just wanted to chime in about the census, um, that the census for all the states across America, it is, it's important to be counted. So I know that we have a lot of people here who are, who are not necessarily calling in from, from New York State, but that it's equally important no matter where you are to do that. Yeah, great. Thank you, Christine. Mm -hmm. And um, just, just to, uh, uh, circle back to, uh, to what Jenna was talking about. Um, if you'll visit that resources page on our website, um, I believe that Emmanuel has loaded that page with a bunch of links that, um, that will enable you to, uh, to participate and, um, and take part in some of this, um, in, in this campaign that Jenna is working on. Um, we have a number of people who've, uh, who've given us, um, Teresa Coleman-Wash sent us a, um, a link that I'm not sure how to And just one last thing, Joey. Just one last thing. Oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. Just one last thing. And this is the part, again, it's all at the state level, uh, unemployment insurance. So a lot of different state unemployment insurance websites have been crashing. And what we want, because before this whole, before coronavirus, um, writers, actors, performers in general, the, the criteria that were used to qualify for unemployment insurance they were very restrictive. And a lot of times writers couldn't apply for employment insurance because of the way that their employers were categorized and whether or not those employers paid into the, you know, their, the employment insurance fund in their respective state. Um, so it's deeply complex. So that's what I'm working on right now. But I think what we should be asking our members to ask at their respective state levels is to ask for the definition of eligibility for unemployment insurance at the state level to be broadened because this is really a unique time because um, people who are working, you know, and this affects not just writers, but you know, like uh, let's say servers in restaurants because of the way it's categorized. I think this is a time for us. And that's what I'm working on right now. And that's something we'll share with um, the guild members on Tuesday in our next sort of communication blast. Great. Um, but really advocating in every single person's different state with your state um, unemployment insurance office with your state elected officials to ask them to broaden the eligibility criteria for unemployment insurance to cover writers at this time. Great. Um, thank you so much, Jenna. I feel like we could, we could have an entire um, hour long session just with, with you and the things that you're working on. I so appreciate you being here. Um, fantastic. So I'm going to, uh, to now gracefully pass the torch over to Amy Von Masick and our, um, our crack uh, business affairs department, because I know that there are going to be people 
who will have questions. I believe that there are a few that were emailed in early, in fact. Um, so I'm going to step aside and let Amy take over. Thank you. Hey everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I hope everybody's well. Amanda, if you need a knitting lesson, I got your back. <laughs> That's all I've been working on. When Thanks, Carol. Working on. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we did get some questions in. I won't going to pull them up right now. Uh, let's see. Okay, as you can imagine, um, people have questions about the um, their canceled shows, a lot about live streaming. Um, so I'm gonna hit those questions first. Um, let's see. Um, so how can writers, and Deborah and Ralph Sevish are both joining, Deborah Murad and Ralph Sevish are both joining us. Um, how can writers make streamings or recordings of regional productions feasible, monetizable, legal? Uh, and after this, more importantly, after this crisis passes, how can these non-live versions be taken down? I don't know, uh, Ralph, if you wanna, um, or Deborah? I think, I think he might still be muted, so while he's unmuting, I'll jump in. But, um, I mean, how do you make that feasible? Look, as an author, it's, it's your right to grant somebody the opportunity to film your show. That's one of your bundle of rights of your copyright. That's what you own. Uh, so you have that right. You can decide to do it or decide not to do it. Um, we have a couple of articles that debate back and forth whether you want these things um, circulating or not. You need to think about the, is that your cast? Is that the quality of the show that you want circulating? Um, think about things like that when making this decision, but it's certainly something that you can do. It's illegal. I, I, I'm not sure um, the legality. Yes, it's, of course it's legal. It's your right. Uh, it's not anyone else's right though, uh, which I think is the important part here. Um, and I think um, the unions have been trying to offer some concessions, especially equity in terms of allowing these um, live streaming opportunities to come about at this time. So we're kind of watching that grow. If, if, I, 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 there was a lot of questions in there, so if there was another one that I missed, I can go back, but I've now Great. forgotten the rest of them. <laughs> Ralph, do you have any further thoughts about um, live streaming or um, you know, people putting their plays up on the internet? I guess not at this moment. Great. Um, so we'll, I'll move on. Um, so this person ha says, uh, I have a oh, reading. Oh, can I just say, I'm sorry. The, the other question they had asked was, how do you make sure it's taken down? Yeah. Right? So I think that's yeah. really, that's really important when you're, when you're engaging in this kind of conversation, um, you need to think about all of those, you know, when does it start? When does it end? How many views are there going to be? Um, are there an unlimited number of views? Is it going to be one view? Um, how many people are going to be able to watch it? So I know a lot of people have been, I think regional theaters have been talking, I hear at least through the grapevine <laughs> with um, Broadway HD, or is it HD Broadway? I always reverse it. Um, but they've been talking with them about live streaming shows. Uh, so what, what does that look like? How many seats, how many seats tickets will they allow you to, to show per, per view? So they're working all of these kind of little details out um, so that it's not unlimited, it's not everywhere, it's not, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of tickets can now be sold right before there were only 30 seats. Um, there are limits on what they can actually present. So people are looking at Vimeo, they're looking at um, these other streaming services as well. But you do want to, you do want to have that conversation. You do want to know when it's going to end and what are all the um, details from start to finish. I think I hear Ralph, but I'm not sure. Uh oh, oh, there he is. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties. No problem. So, Ralph, maybe you can take this next one. It's also on live streaming, but it's from a different perspective. Um, this person has a reading schedule. There's no admission fee. Can I hire actors, a director, a stage manager to read the play via streaming for a non-paying audience? What are the requirements? Um, the requirement, you can look at online at Actors Equity's uh, 
website and they have what's called the stage reading code. So um, it's outlined there what the requirements are. Great. Um, so really just um, checking in with, uh, uh, I'm going to assume this person is trying to produce their own work um, as opposed to producing somebody else's work. So really just checking in with the Actors' Equity is the only place that you'd want to check in with. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're act, if you want to hire equity actors, um, they're going to be governed by their various contracts. And there is a, it's not a contract, I don't think, I think it's more of a code um, about how actors can work in a, a stage reading. Um, I think for a, a table reading, I think it's um, even more fr uh, freer in terms of what they're, you know, permitted to do. But I, um, I, I think when you're filming, I think with equity, you're going to have to really talk to them and check with that because it's not the same to just have a stage reading to have something that's now being filmed and live. Now you've added another layer. So um, definitely check. And like I said, I think I think at this time they're they're trying to work with theaters. Um, it's it's not an easy thing for for them to negotiate. It's something that they kind of I think struggle with when it comes time to filming their members. But um, you, you do have to check with them. I think even beyond perhaps what's online if you're looking to do something more than what that code would normally allow. Right, uh, these, it's an emergency situation and I've heard a lot of groups been permitted, being permitted to, to stream. Um, you also have to be careful about gathering groups of people together depending on your locale. Um, you, wanna, you don't wanna act in violation of uh, recommend, recommended uh, gathering size, uh, whether it's state, local, or based on CDC protocols. Um, I, for a while, we were really, you know, supportive of the whole live stream performance thing, but as this has developed, that in and of itself is problematic, just uh, because it's dangerous for the cast and crew to gather. Um, not just audiences. And if you're the person collecting all these, if you're self-producing, then you're essentially the producer, right? And you're the employer of a lot of people. Um, and that, you know, you do have to kind of watch out for the well-being of your employees that you're bringing in there. So there could be legal implications beyond even um, the recommendations from CDC, right? Um, you, you, you may be putting yourself in a sort of position where you could be liable for other people's well-being. Well, whenever you produce, you're taking on a whole other role and uh, has a whole other set of responsibilities. And that goes beyond your role as a playwright. Um, so yeah, there are liabilities involved in, in hiring people and um, contracting with people and, and raising money in all those areas. And for, I, for further conversation with that, you should give the Guild a call and we'll talk all about what those liabilities are. Um, I want to move on to another question from Kit. Um, Hi, Amy. Our production has been trying to get equity to release the use of video footage for the purposes of sending to other theaters and commercial producers for consideration of future productions, but they have not released those rights to us. Any chance there's an ongoing convo between DG and equity about this? Ralph, if you'd like to chime in. <laughs> um, maybe Christine can talk about it, but I, 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 I've, we've been in ongoing conversations with equity for a number of years on a whole range of issues, and we really haven't been successful in um, working in getting anything accomplished with them, whether it goes to revisions of the, of the showcase code in New York or LA, or ta you know, taping and things like that, or um, a contract for authors who are self-producing. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm always trying to develop, hello? Sorry. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> um, I'm always trying to develop our relationship with them and we, sh we do participate in the, in the coalition of Broadway unions and guilds, COBUG, with them. So, and um, we see them on the 20th administration committee. So, you know, I have a, uh, relationship with Mary McCall, their executive director, um, but um, so far, no, no luck. Is there any chance that with with the the this huge change that's come, that they might be more open, like to writers 
whose show had three performances and then was, you know, had to shut down in a way that they might be able to show it to producers who weren't able to come because the show closed? I mean, is there a, that a possibility that there might be a shifting with this? I think um, that... So, yeah, no, I just want to say, I think that everything is shifting. The world as we know it, it no longer exists. So um, uh, I, I think that there are, there are new conversations happening that, that um, involve streaming. Um, but I don't want to speak for, I don't want to speak for Actors' Equity. I, I, but I, I, I do want, just want to say that I think it's worth formulating new questions and trying to have new conversations. Um, I don't know what the answers will be, but I think it's definitely worth um, investigating. Oh, uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of things that, you know, I think that each one of us. Uh, I know it's for it's true for me. I don't always think of all of the angles, which is why I consult Ralph or I consult Mary McCall because I don't. You know, it seems like a very reasonable request, and then there's always some someone we're trying to protect that we're not thinking of. So th that's why I hesitate to say anything to, to speak for, I, uh, you know, at any time to speak for any either um, association. But, um, but I'm always about trying to continue conversations. Excellent. Um, I do, uh, I do want to be conscious of time because I know we're already over. Um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do one last question um, for you, Deborah. It's a, it's a softball one. <laughs> so um, is there a contract, the is there a contract that should be used between an author and compose, between a, between an author and composer during a musical's development process? Collaboration agreement perhaps would work. We have several models. No, we have one model for musicals, one model for plays on our um, website, which you should go and take a look at. And then you can call us at the help desk, which is open for business and never closed. Um, so like the post office, right? We just, yes. Um, but we can do it from home. So it's even, uh, <laughs> even better. Um, so you can, you know, take a look at that agreement and, start to think about the relationship you're forming with the people you're working with and give us a call and we can certainly walk you through it and discuss the, uh, the issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, um, unless there's anything else, I mean, that's all the questions that I've had. Um, I do want to reiterate that the help desk is open for business. We are reviewing contracts. We are answering phone calls. Um, so, you know, give us something to do and give us a call. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Deborah. I appreciate it. Um, I just saw that Teresa Coleman Wash said, um, uh, responding to the, um, responding to the uh, remarks about Actors' Equity that um, she sees that on their website, they've got, uh, it looks like they're developing a new streaming agreement um, in light of the current situation. So um, there is there is something in process. There is a link that she's provided that I don't know how to share with you. So um, I'm just going to say, visit the, uh, the Actors' Equity website for an update on what they're working on. Um, thank you, Teresa, for that. Um, and there was one other thing that came through, Dominic DeAndrea is online and um, he said that the One Minute Play Festival at the New Ohio is canceled. They've offered him a reboot spot for the fall, which includes 67 playwrights. Um, wow, that's the, the benefit of a One Minute Play Festival. You can really incorporate a lot of people, um, which is great. Um, he says that uh, he offered a response play project this week um, he has 24 hours left for playwrights to send in for the coronavirus plays. Boy, it was bound to happen. Um, 150 word micro plays open to anyone, guild or guild members or not. Um, it has to have two characters and be 150 words or, or fewer. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I just, I saw this on Twitter as well, Dominic. So thank you for posting that. Um, he says to email coronavirusplays at gmail.com. Um, submission, submissions are accepted from all over the world and due Friday before 5 p.m. They're going to do the performances via Zoom. So thanks for that, Dominic. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Um, and thank you, thank you, Christine and Amanda for 
being here with me today. Thanks this for inviting thanks. us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It was a great experiment. Um, Glad and to be your guinea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to Terry Stratton for being um, a solid rock and um, so helpful. I appreciate Always. all of everything she does. Um, and thank you to all of our guests. There were so many, I, I'm not going to waste much more time um, um, saying all their names, but I so appreciate you, you joining us today and to sharing, for sharing um, everything that you've shared. Um, uh, uh, Terry, as we go out, oh, look, and we have a dog. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello. Chloe Petunia. Oh. My dog, my dog has been whining this whole time, which is why mostly I've been a mute too, because he's, now he's, now he's, yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. My, my, uh, my doppelganger. Yes, Joey. My dog's name is Joey. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Terry, could you, um, could you bring Hannah Cole back on so that she can show us her paper cutting? I noticed that she had it out earlier and I would like that to be our, our, our image going out if she, if you don't mind. Um, hi, Hannah, would you hold up your paper cut? Hannah, I didn't realize hey. you were the paper, the paper I didn't artist. Oh like my God, I you're didn't amazing. Either. You are amazing. Oh, oh, they, you know, they canceled my teaching gig in Norway because I can't get into the country. And so my last chance of earning money is to finish this paper cut by wow. tomorrow. So, amazing. Um, it's actually for um, theater people. And this is actually all of the shows that this woman has been in um, over the course of her life at a community theater in the town where I grew up. So it goes back all the way to 1963. Um, she's turning 60 this year. And I, I don't know how to show it better. No, I can show you this. Here's the paper cut I did for the show that got canceled. Oh. And then, you know what's funny about that? They used, they used this little detail yeah. to put up the notice that said that the show was canceled. <laughs> and I didn't know it. I went to the window and I was like, oh, my paper cut. Oh, my paper cut. Yeah. But yeah. Well, you're a, an incredible uh, artist. Thank you. Thank you. Here's Once Upon a Mattress. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, we can. Wow. Yes, there's like the odd couple, it's everything. It's so great. Thank you're you. Amazing. Yeah, I had to keep working on it while we were working. It's like course. my last shot. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm gonna I'm going to make a cocktail <laughs> and probably another uh, meatloaf. That's yeah, your garlic meatloaf sounded really good, Joey. <laughs> you are not gonna get a lot of sleep. Yeah, right. Have it. No, no, no. I Thank think you know. that's called a fart loaf. <laughs> <laughs> hey now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, over oh, live. Oh. We are live. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for everybody who's joined us online. I appreciate it. I'm waving you, uh, waving to you and wishing you um, safety and good health and, um, and good fortune. May all your canceled shows get, get rebooked. Um, thank you. Thank you all very much. Uh, we may be trying this again in a week. I have no idea. Um, we need to reassess and figure out what we can do, but thank you all for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you. It. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.